Today's message is New Testament, Hebrew chapter 3, verse 12 through 14. Hebrew chapter 3, verse 12 through 14. As I read through today's message, I hope all of you will listen to the voice of a living God. See to it, brothers, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We have come to share in Christ if we hold firmly till the end the confidence we had at first. Amen. In Greek mythology, there is a love story of Orpheus and his wife Eurydice. I think many of you find it familiar. Eurydice is the wife of Orpheus, and Orpheus is the son of Apollon, the god of music. And he is the one of the greatest poets and the musicians. And the Orpheus was tormented by the loss of his beloved wife when she was beaten by a viper and dies. And finally, he went to the afterlife. And he played the harp to touch the boatman. So he crossed the river. And to go to the afterlife, he also met the carabels and touched him to open the door to go into the afterlife. Finally, he played another round of the, the harp before the Hardest, which is the king of the afterlife. And Hardest was touched by the playing of the harp. And he just let Eruduke for, for the Orpheus to take, take her to this life. And there's one condition. So until they go out to the overground world, they shouldn't look back. That's one condition. And they should never look back on until they go to uh, the other side of the world. They hold, the Orpheus hold the hands of his wife, and he came almost to the other side of the world, but before uh, the stepping over the threshold, he just to look back on, and finally he can go out to the uh, other side of the world, and uh, the couple ultimately should be uh, divided, and that's the very unfortunate and sad story. That story has been depicted by picture by many painters. I'd like to show you one of that. And that is written by French artist Camille Corot. The background is a little scary and spooky, and it depicts the underworld. So it largely symbolized the, symbolizes the afterworld, and the couple is about to go to the other side of the world. And Orpheus is holding hands, holding the, the harp in one hand as a lantern, and going to the other side of the world. At the end, right after the sin, he looked back. If he didn't look back at the end, he could have happily li happy he could have lived happily ever after with his beloved Eurydice. But he failed. He finally looked back and he lost his wife for good. You may find a similar story in the Old Testament saying not to look back. The wife of Lot turned out, turn out to be a salt column as she looked back on. That's the order of the Lord, and they failed to make a good on that. So they just to look at the Sodom and Gomorrah and becoming the column of a surfer. We may think that what happened if they endure a little further, but she failed to endure that and becoming the surfer column. As we lived so far, there are many failures you have experienced since you can since you failed to not to look back on. There are many stories. 
while you are living, what do you think the most important virtue in your life? Earning wisdom, be smart, and be healthy, that's all good, but the more important virtue in our lives is the ability to persevere, to endure. So the 50 days to go until many students to take the KSAT, it's, it is of course important to be smart and to have a good teacher and to study hard. All of them are necessary and important. But more important thing is the ability to persevere until the last day. That's the most important ability for students to, uh, successful, to be successful. If they do not have that ability, persevere, then they wouldn't achieve anything. Everything will be in vain. No matter how good idea you have and no matter how the thorough strategies you have, if you fail to endure, then you couldn't make it. That happens a lot. And the what is the ability to persevere? That is a great power that we can have. So first of all, the, when it comes to the ability to persevere, that can be a mental health and mental strength. The people who have a great mental strength, they can navigate through the, all the difficulties. So that might be the first uh, the characteristics of the ability of a perseverance. And can you guess what is the another ability to persevere? That might be the physical fitness or being healthy. We have to have the mental strength to endure. And at the same time, we have to have a strong health, physical fitness to achieve something and to endure. We have to have a healthy mind and healthy body to endure everything. So for example, of a mountain climbing or a mountain cliff, let's imagine how, what kind of ability or power they have to have to climb the cliff. They have to have some strategies where to put their hand and where to put their foot and how to balance their weight things like. That's very important information and strategies. But if you physically doing that, the most important thing is the, the muscle and power. You have to have some the the grip on your hand. hand. That is uh, the physical fitness. And that's the ability to physical endurance. No matter how, strength, how strong your mental is, if your physical fitness is not enough, then you ultimately will fail down. So to endure, you have to have mental and physical strengths. However, that's also important to have that kind of strengths for our spiritual life to make our spiritual life to be filled with the blessings, there is one thing we have to do. Here and there in the Bible, it clearly says how we can achieve a successful life. For example, if you open the Palms chapter 1, it says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he mediates day, by day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever he does prospers. So in the Bible, we clearly understand what is the way to achieve a successful life. And how can we make our leaf does not wither? And how can we yield its fruits in season? Uh, there is a clear guidelines in our Bible. And the Palms chapter 1 says, do not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Do not stand in the way of sinners. Do not sit in the seat of mockers. That's the way to make a successful life. Then what about you? Do you successfully achieve that kind of life? 
you don't follow and walk in the counsel of the wicked, do you do not stand in the way of sinners, you don't sit in the seat of mockers, you try, but sometimes you failed. We haven't done that consistently. Sometimes we failed. Sometimes we make negotiate. Sometimes we do not sit in the seat of the mockers, but sometimes we sit in that seat. That's our life. The problem is that consistency. We have to follow all the words given by our Lord consistently, but we couldn't make it. That's the problem. So as I prepare for these messages, today's message is actually linked to the last week and the two weeks before Sundays. It's all linked. Do you remember the title of two weeks ago, two Sundays ago? I, that was Prudent Lips. So the prudent word, the warm words, that's what we need to share with the people around you. And the last Sunday, I talk about do not make any resentment word. Instead of resentment, we can give thanks to the Lord and we can pray instead of resentment. That's my encouragement to, through the, the sermon yes, last week. You may forget about the title of the sermon last week and two weeks ago, but at least on the Sunday, you may have a commitment not to make any resentment and be, pr be having prudent lips. But day by day, do you keep making warm words? Do you not making any resentment? But that might not be the case. So I want to share, I want to highlight that point today. It would be better if we really do that all the time. If we haven't done that, that means we do not have any power to persevere and consistency. We decided to make a warm words. So you just to say good words to your children, but your children gave you unexpected response. Actually, that is very natural because they go through the puberty. So then their parents might say that, you know, I am changed and I'm moved by the sermon, so I just try my best to give you the warm words. But what is your response? You do not respond well properly. So that's the reality that we are having. So in our the spiritual life, we are not consistent and we don't persevere. That's very frequently happened to us. So physically, to build and Im improve our physical healthness, so what you do? What do you do? We do the exercise and we grow the build the muscle. And sometimes you just focus on certain area to build some the muscle. By doing so, you can improve your physical fitness, then you can achieve more bigger things. You can endure and you can uh, persevere despite of all difficult things. The, what about the spiritual life? The same goes for our spiritual life. Just making a decision or a commitment is not enough. If you just make a couple of trials and just realize you can make it and gave up, that's not what our Lord wants. It's like you know how to do the exercise, but not to do it. Now you know how to do it and what kind of benefit you can get through the exercise. Then the work that we have to do is do the exercising consistently and thoroughly. So we have to have the process of perseverance. So if we believe we, I need to love and I need to believe I, I'm, I need to sacrifice, but we forget that, then our the spiritual life would never make any progress. The physical fitness in the spiritual perspective, and that is described as God's holy character in our Bible. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says, His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. That's very important because it shows how we can achieve His glory and goodness and life. He 
our uh, divine power has given us everything we need to achieve that life. Just like we know how to exercise to be healthy, our Lord teaches us how we can achieve the godliness and eternal life. And there is a reason for him to do that. Through this, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. He wants us to achieve his holy character in us and to take part in his holy character. That's the purpose of our Lord. And if we do the exercise, we can improve our muscles and the physical fitness. Just like that, in our spiritual life, if we just dip down into our holy spiritual life, then we can uh, develop God's holy character in us. So we will share in Christ if we just uh, do our exercises in the spiritual life. Love you is a very precious word. Let's make a sacrifice is also precious. But if that is just the resting our rest in our knowledges, then it cannot have any dynamic power in our lives. So the two Peter chapter one verse five says for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge, to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. Add one thing to another. So just like you are doing a different set of uh, the, the exercises to build up some the muscles, we can do the spiritual exercises by adding one by one, like knowledge, to self-control, to self-control, to perseverance, perseverance, to godliness, and the brotherly kindness, to and bro to brotherly kindness, love. We can exercise by adding one by one. Through that, we can achieve holy spirits and holy characters in it. And to Peter, chapter one, verse ten says. Therefore, my brothers, be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never fall, and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If we do the spiritual exercise, and if we build the spiritual strengths and go to closer, go closer to our our Lord, the holy character, then we will never fail, fail, and we will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom. That means we will be entitled and appropriate to go into the kingdom. Actually, we know how to do it. We have every knowledge to do that, but we fail to practicing it continuously. That's the biggest reason of our failure. In other words, in the Revelation says the same thing, same things. The Revelation chapter 14 verse 12 says, this calls for patient endurance on the part of the saints who obey God's commandments and remain faithful to Jesus. It shows a two area where we have to be enduring. The first is commitments. We have to endure to work and live according to the commandments. We have to exercise repeatedly, and also for the be faithful, be faithful to Jesus, we need to keep the faith in Jesus. At the same time, we have to have a faithful faith in Jesus. We have to endure to keep the faith in Jesus. In our university, there is a professor who majored in uh, the sermon and the consultation. Since day one, he joined our university. There is one principle he do every time, whether it is a lecture or a meeting. 
that's the thing. He start everything with by saying I love you. He say I love you to the students, but you know he's not only doing it with words, but also some gestures. He make a big heart with arms or the fingers. That's the beginning of everything for him. So at the very beginning, I thought that might be one single nice gesture, but I was touched by listening to his messages. He's saying that loving other is not easy. Loving other is really difficult if you want to have a love from bottom of your heart. So to love each other, you have to bite blood to love others. That's his message. You have to bite blood and you have to say I love you despite of all things. You can love them, but you decided and determined to love them. So you don't have any love from bottom of your heart, but if you committed to love somebody, then you should bite the blood to say out loud, I love you. Then the true love come to us and true love will be exposed. I think that's kind of unfortunate destiny of human beings, but at the same time, I believe that is a very right word. We are exercising the love. We are practicing uh, the sacrifices despite of all things. We just to do all the exercises to, uh, to love each other and to be faithful to our Lord. That's the endurance that the, church, uh, the Christian should have. In our today's message, uh, one message says, we have come to share in Christ if we hold firmly till the end the confidence we had at first. That is also very important messages. If we have come to share in Christ, the what does help us to achieve that? If we hold firmly till the end the confidence we had at first, then we will, we have come to share in Christ. When we just start believing in and just trusting in the Jesus, there is a values that we are fascinated by, we were touched by. Uh, the values of hope, values of the heaven, values of the love, values of sacrifice. If we just look at it and let it go, we never achieve the perseverance and never achieve the the life that our Lord wants us to live. But we just hold on to that until we achieve it. That's really important to value. If we hold tight on to the values and confidence we had at first, then we will be the one who share in Christ. We decided to share the word of warmth and the word of love and the word of sacrifice. That's a pretty good words out there. The what is important is that we have to bite the bullet to achieve it. The confidence we had at first, we hold on to that. We hold on to the value that we had at first and do it until the very last moment. It can happen in your day-to-day -day life at home and in work, in business, and any circumstances. We just hold on to the confidence and love we had at first and do it and keep it until the very last moment. That's how we participate in the kingdom of our heaven and kingdom of our Lord. My beloved church members, as we live Nothing happens if we just uh, sit idle, if we just uh, come to the church and just uh, good, uh, listen to the good words and just uh, leave. It helps you a little bit, but if you just uh, listen and go out without any making any efforts, then you any real changes doesn't come to you. Any real growth in your face doesn't come to you. Just like you keep exercising for your physical health, you should exercise for your spiritual health. Then it will protect you. I, will, I want to share one piece of a poem that I love. That is from the book of Love in the Forest. If you go to the Jejudo Island, there is a gallery named Kim Yonggap Gallery. Uh, the Kim Young Gap is a photographer, and he dies in his early days. He took many beautiful photos, and uh, you can see his pictures there. And there is a one picture I do want, I'd like to share with you, uh, but uh, but his work is copyrighted, so I have to uh, choose one similar pictures. You know, this picture is not as good as Kim Young-gap's picture, 
but you know the real picture is more powerful because it the background is more the cyclone with the dark side, and the reeds is more like a very uh, vulnerable. So, if you happen, if you have a chance to go to the Kim Young Gap Gallery, please uh, find the picture that I mentioned. And one poet is inspired by the picture, and he wrote down a poem, and it always touches a sweet point, a sweet spot of my mind. Let me just read it through. Gusty winds blow with envy. Love is always the weakest grass, but the wind cannot last three days. Be patient, and you will prevail. But the wind cannot last three days. Be patient, then you will prevail. It really touches me into the deep in my heart. In your day-to-day -day life, there are so many things you have to endure. You are living together with some your sworn enemy. Sometimes you have to bear with it. And you are living with your families. That family should be the community of love, but sometimes you have to endure so many things. And between parents and children, and between uh, the your the coll colleagues and boss, there are so many things you bear with. In the process of bearing and process of enduring, you may understand how big the ability of perseverance is. But the wind cannot last three days. Be patient, and you will prevail. Your husband and wife can bother you, and your children can bother you. Whenever they give you, they give you difficult times, just to remind this word, the wind cannot last three days. Be patient, and you will prevail. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for opening to us the secrets of the kingdom of heaven and for leading us to the divine nature by which we can enter into it. We have learned that it is through a process of perseverance, not merely knowing, but enduring to the end, and that we will enter the kingdom of God and become partakers of the divine nature. Grant that we may indeed bring about your kingdom on earth, not by a face that is easily broken, but by a face that endures to the end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.